PowerTool Studio is the latest release of our industry-leading, easy-to-use motion control software. PowerTool Studio is used to program our PTI 210 motion control module. In this video, I'll be giving an overview of the software, including how to establish communications with a drive, open and then download a saved file, and how to check drive status once you're online. So if you're ready, let's get started. When you first open PowerTools Studio, you'll be presented with a window that looks like this. So I'd like to begin by just kind of showing you around the user interface a little bit. To begin with, we'll look at the file menu up here. If I expand file, it's your normal Windows file menu. I can create a new file by clicking here. I can open an existing file by clicking here. And I can also configure my printer by clicking there. There's also a list of the most recent files that you've had open. And of course, exit will close the software. Now the device menu contains upload all. There's a shortcut on the toolbar called upload all also. And this is what you would select if all you wanted to do was connect to a drive and upload the program into PowerTool Studio software. So let's look at options now. We have options, preferences, PowerTools options. This just has some general um, things uh, regarding the pop-ups on this tab that may appear during the use of PowerTool Studio software. And then we have what's called motor DDF, and that is a motor dynamic data file. So this just points out the path to where the motor files are stored on your computer. Click OK. More importantly though, and along the lines of upload all, we have options, preferences, scanner options. PowerTools Studio software uses a scanner to communicate with uh, drives that are connected to your computer. So you have your choice, either RTU, which is serial. So if I'm connecting to a Unidrive M701 or a Digitex HD M751, something with a serial port instead of an ethernet port, I would configure these settings here. The address range is the Modbus node address range, which by default is set to one. And um, if you're having trouble connecting, uh, this is one of the things I would change. I would up that. Um, it may, the, you know, the drive you're trying to connect to may have a node address greater than five, but so you just up, you know, continue to increase that. But then we have COM ports. Now, I don't have my USB serial cable plugged in, but if I did, it would appear in this window also. So I'm going to be using Ethernet for this demonstration. So I'm going to uncheck this uh, just to sort of speed things up. So let's look at Ethernet now. Now, the scanner is not going to scan for an IP address. The scanner is going to scan for a MAC ID. So if I have scan a local network, it will scan for any drive that's connected to my computer. If I know the IP address of the drive I'm looking for, I'll just choose to scan an address range and then enter the IP address range in here rather than scanning the whole network. Well, I don't know what my IP address is, so I'm going to scan a local network. And then I can come down and enable or disable any network adapters on my computer. Well, I know I'm not connected with Wi-Fi, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. And then we have, I have two different Ethernet adapters that I will scan. So I'll just click Apply. Over on the Tools, we can update firmware. View will allow me to turn off the toolbar or the status bar, and then help. We have PTI 210 help, 
which is the help for the hardware on the PTI 210 module. But the software help is here, Power Tool Studio help. And then about Power Tools will show me the version of Power Tools that I'm working with. Now the toolbar uh, only has a few icons on it now, but once I get an application open, um, this will expand to show you all of the tools that are available in Power Tool Studio. So let's look at how to connect to a drive next. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate now how to upload from a PTI 210 module. Now I know that this module is new, the module I'm using, but I want to demonstrate this anyway. So I'll begin by clicking Upload All, and it opens the scanner. And it'll scan for any drives with PTI 210 modules that I have connected to my computer. So it says there were no devices found. However, there is a device there, but that device, because it can't communicate because of its IP address, which is right there, can't communicate with my computer. So what I'm going to need to do is I'll click configure just to show you what the problem is. But it's saying that the range of addresses my PC can see is between 192.168.11.1. Well, if I move over, you'll see that the IP address on the PTI 210 drive is 192.168.1. So I don't want to change anything here, because if I did that, it would end up changing the IP address of the drive I'm connected to, and that's not what I want to do. So rather, I'm going to close that, cancel that, cancel that too, and now I'll go and adjust the IP address on my network adapter. So I'm running Windows 10. I'll right click there, Open Network and Internet Settings. Change Adapter Options. That's what we want. Okay, so here's my internet. Here are my internet adapters, Ethernet adapters. And you can see this one has something to do with Wi Fi, so I'm not going to uh, change that. But this is the one that is connected to my drive. So I will double click on that. I'll click Properties, Internet Protocol version 4, Properties. And now you see that the subnet my adapter is set to is 192.168.11. Well, I want to make that a 1. So, OK. Close that, close that, and that, and this. Okay, now let's try that again. Upload all. There's the scanner. And there it is. So now that I've adjusted the network adapter on my computer, it sees the drive. I'll click OK. And I'll click Upload. Now again, this is a new module, and this is what you'll see. The current application cannot be uploaded because it does not exist. So I'll click OK to close that. So what I'll do instead is I will open an existing project and download it to the drive. So I will choose this program. And I'm just going to download now. So I'll click Download. And you'll see the same thing. It opens the network scanner. 
starts looking for drives with PTI 2.10 modules installed. And there it is, it found it. I'll click OK. And now I'll, I'll choose the drive I want to download to. And I'll click OK. And now what it's doing is checking the validity of the downloaded file in the drive as compared with the file on PowerTools Studio that I just opened. And if everything is OK, it will look just like you see here. So now, as I mentioned earlier, the toolbar has expanded greatly to show me a lot more icons. And what I'll finish with today is if you'd like to check the status of the drive for diagnostic purposes. Now that I'm online, I'll just click status. And this gives me a one, uh, one screen overview of the current status of the drive. If you'd like to see more details about PowerTools Studio and how to use it to configure an application like this, please visit our online training portal, which I'll link in the description down below, and then enroll in the Getting Started with PowerTools Studio training course that is posted there. So thanks for watching, and more importantly, thanks for choosing Control Techniques.